part of it. Then the and the quality is also maybe problem uh, because only in the last minute you'll know about the bad quality or good quality or whatever it is. And even the schedule you may not have a lot of control because uh, it's one big bang release. That means you'll get the bad news very late in the cycle. So this fixed price waterfall kind of models uh, will not really help you to go agile because agile promotes frequent deliveries and it promotes partnering with the customer and it promotes accepting changes even very late in the development cycle. So fixed price may not work for us. Uh, then okay, we have <coughs> sorry we have time and material. Uh, yes, it helps agile to be agile. Uh, uh, now here the problem is okay now the supplier when I say vendor the supplier is not at all accountable for anything you know so based on the timesheet okay now you get the money uh, sorry here I skipped some slides uh, so time and material the problem is uh, it helps you to go be agile that's fine that that's good news. Uh, but then the vendor is not accountable for uh, the deliverables and all. So every every week you submit the timesheets and based on the timesheets the customer pay you money. Uh, so in a classical time and material model, uh, the, the customer is always at risk whereas uh, the vendor, uh, the supplier will never make a loss in a kind of a time and material. Uh, so the, here the vendor uh, provides the customers an hourly cost, uh, resources at an hourly cost. In all TNM contracts, that is time and material contracts, uh, the cost risk is with the customer uh, because if you, yeah, yeah the, the supplier will never make a loss. It is always the, uh, the customer. So that is one issue with time and material. At the same time, it supports Agile. If somebody can sign a time and material, with a company, uh, then it is it is highly conducive, uh, but then it it opens up avenues for uh, cheating as well. Uh, so so this doesn't protect the interest of the customer. Uh, then we have uh, this this is something new uh, that is uh, a fixed capacity kind of thing. So that means okay, we are, we are talking about an ODC kind of a thing where uh, you will provide a team for the customer, the customer can choose the team and you know that that particular team can deliver this many story points per month or this many function points per month or this many Kellogg per month. Uh, so, so this works, uh, this is perfect. Uh, then it transfers some risk and is clear about who owns that risk. Uh, so some risk gets transferred to the supplier and some risk is still with the vendor. A vendor owns providing a healthy team that provides a contracted amount of high quality output. There uh, the partnership ends. So if, a, if a, an American company comes to India and they want to run an OD, you know, offshore development center within a company uh, in India, then I'll provide him with the space, I'll provide him with the team members project manager could be from his side or from my side, there my responsibility ends. So I'm not accountable for the, the milestones. Uh, so, yeah, so that is an issue. So the capacity uh, and the quality risk is shared with the ven by the vendor, but then he doesn't own the, uh, the project management and schedule related risk here. So that is one disadvantage for the, uh, for the customer. The vendor provides predictable uh, capacity. That means, okay, now you have a hundred plus a team, a hundred member team working from India. So you know that okay, you can get that kind of a productivity. Uh, and the customer has the prerogative even to choose the team. So you know your team. So it is not time and material. Uh, it is fixed capacity. They give you a facility uh, and then, then you can use that facility uh, but then the schedule risk is with you only. Uh, and here the customer owns the risk for business value. So why why is the customer doing the project? The customer wants to resolve some of the uh, business challenges. That's why he's doing the project. Now here all that he gets is the, the code. 
not the solution. So you can use the team and you'll get the software and if the software uh, resolves this problem, you can be happy about it. But if the software doesn't resolve this problem, uh, then okay, the whole amount is sunk. So it's a, it's a loss to the uh, loss to the vendor. Uh, so a, a reminder for you: anything which needs clarification or extra explanation, just type in, uh, so I can I can answer them at the end of the session. So nobody's using the chat facility. So if you have any queries, you can you can type. Uh, then maybe I, I should be able to answer. So are you with me? So at least you type in yes so that I know that okay now the line is not broken. Yeah fine so yeah that's fine. Okay uh, so we spoke about uh, fixed price contract we spoke about fixed cost project uh, fixed cost uh, thing and then we spoke about fixed capacity contracts. Now, these things, the fixed price contract, do not support the agile way of working. Other things, okay, they partially sub support uh, the agile way of working. But then, agile talks about partnership with the client uh, in delivering, in solving his issues or problems. So here, we now we are introducing something new, uh, which is a value-based uh, stuff. Where yes, it it of course works. Uh, so here we are not talking about uh, the lines of code and all. Here we are talking about the the business issue the customer wants to address. So they are talking about the value. Now let's say I want to reduce the cycle time of customer complaint handling by thirty percentage. Can you solve it for us? So that is a that is the requirement from the customer. So he's not going to give you the screenshots and the file structures and you know those can and acceptance test and all acceptance test will be for the the business value so if you can reduce it by a cycle time by 10 percentage okay then I'll give you this kind of money and that's it so you are so here you are forced to work very closely with the customer in resolving the the customers uh, the business problem and this is the best way to 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 go agile uh, uh, so this is the best way to go agile uh, and then ensure it ensures that all are accountable for the true goal of the of the of the problem or, the, or solving the problem. Vendor owns delivery of a solution that achieves the value story. So if you really look at a project charter, uh, then it talks about the business case and the value part of it. Uh, so that gets decomposed further into value stories. By doing this project, these are the objectives we want to achieve: objective one, objective two, objective three. Uh, and then for those objectives, okay, you write the write the acceptance criteria, and then you deliver a solution to the client, and and jointly you develop it and then deploy it and see whether those acceptance criteria are met. Uh, so here we are talking about a true partnership with the with the client. So the the contract dictates what needs to be done, know how it should get done. The customer is not going to give you the technical specification. The customer will give you only the problem, and then you should have the domain knowledge uh, to recommend a solution. Maybe along with the customer, maybe a third-party consultant also can be hired. So it's like uh, me signing a contract with you, saying that okay, see, I'm not, I'm not uh, signing the contract with you for delivering a PMP training or an agile training. I'll say okay, next one year's time, uh, you are, you, you are salary will go by an additional two percentage because of all these things uh, the best practices you learn the certification all those things then I get a percentage of that uh, then okay then we talk about a true partnership at least I should be with you till you become a certified project PMP or agile guy uh, no, professional then we can talk about partnership but if it is just delivering a training and then collecting the money and then running away then there is no room that becomes a kind of fixed price I'm not I'm not really bothered so so here it's all about partnering with the client and in order to achieve the business value and deliver the business value for the client so, so it talks about true partnership and even the risks are shared so if the, if the solution doesn't meet 
uh, doesn't solve the customer's uh, business case, then there is a problem. Uh, then maybe both of you will equally suffer or, or, or forfeit uh, the returns from the project. But at the same time, if it is successful, then you command a premium. So maybe this is the right model uh, that that, uh, that will make your agile implementation uh, fruitful. Uh, yes, uh, uh, coming back to the question, uh, so that's fine. So the next slide uh, should should solve that issue. Now here, uh, what is shown here is a is a project charter by the client and the charter contains the business capabilities that need to be delivered at the end of the project like capability 1, capability 2, capability 3. So this we transfer into uh, not the feature stories, this we, trans this, we expand a, a value story. So we call it as a value story. So we expand it into value story. At the end of this, this particular project these are the value stories that need to be delivered. The value story 1, value story 2, value story 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then you prioritize it also. You know, priority 1, priority 2, priority 3 kind of thing. So these value stories, we, we further break it down into user stories and then estimate. And we may not give a commitment to the customer for delivering all the value stories together. First we say, okay, we, let us work only on this. That is top priority. This may comprise of uh, let's say 20 user stories. So if you do all those 20 user stories and then roll out the solution, uh, then okay here customer can decide whether this should come to you. The, 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 the value story second will come to you or not. So this gets incremented by the value story wise. Uh, uh, and each of these value story there will be uh, there will be commitment dates. Okay, this should be achieved by so and so date. This should be achieved by so and so date, and this will comprise of multiple sprints, and this will be built up on uh, built on multiple uh, user stories as well. So every value to be delivered, there will be a value story, and every value story will have a start date, and uh, there will be a start date, and there will be an end date, and all your sprints, everything will be planned within this. Okay, so I, I presume uh, this answers uh, Mah Mahesh, Mahesh's question. Does it mean there is not a targeted end date for a value-based contract type? Uh, we do have uh, uh, committed dates for delivering value, not for the entire set, uh, value story by value story. Okay, we do have commitment dates. Uh, but then here, uh, the customer should be game for it, okay? Uh, in, in most of the uh, outsourcing implementations of Agile, what I've seen is uh, the product owner is, a, is an external person to the team and that is one of the biggest challenges. So the customer is game for it uh, and they, they are willing to work very closely with the, with the development team, uh, then okay, this model is ideal. And that is one of the prerequisites for Agile as well because throughout the development, starting from contracting to the final delivery, the team and the customer, the product owner and the business, everybody is supposed to, everybody is supposed to work as a single unit. So here, the customer, the business unit from the customer side commits to this. The IT team from the customer side also commit to this, and vendor uh, with the supplier, they also commit to this. Uh, the costing should be based on value story, uh, and sometimes, okay, now we can even talk about a hey, boss. Don't give me any money for the project but I want uh, 20 percentage of the savings from the project for the next three years time. Uh, so so the, that if the customer is game for it fine so he also wins. Uh, I will not give you any money for the project but then we are talking about partnership so the, just the cost alone I'll give you. Profit part I'll keep it with me and the, and the profit is nothing but maybe 10 percentage of the revenue I earn by implementing the saved by implementing the solution for next three years. So that way sometimes you'll make tremendous money. Uh, but but then yeah anyway the cost part can be worked out that means you give an aggressive pricing you're willing to forfeit your uh, profit. Uh, the engineering cost still the customer may pay that's fine. 
uh, and the profit part should be linked to achievement of the the goals uh, that's fine so it's it's like let's say I collect 50 percentage of the amount for training uh, when I complete the training and the remaining uh, 50 per it's not 50 percentage if you get a two percentage increment uh, you give me 50 percentage of that extra increment you give me 50 percentage of that for the next three years means instead of making 10,000 sometimes I'll make two lakhs right uh, so then then we are we are talking about uh, true partnerships uh, so it's there is nothing like the the customer wins or the supplier wins so we win together we work as a single team and then you resolve some of the issues for the customer he benefits and you also get a cut off it then it could be uh, true agile <coughs> uh, so it, it you can tr you can try out in the pre-sale stage itself uh, you can go really aggressive here like okay we need only the cost and we'll expose the the team to you uh, and absolute transparency uh, and the rest of the money comes from delivery of value okay what's the difference between value based and what is FDD all I know about FDD is feature driven development a feature doesn't resolve may not resolve an issue so if the billing is linked to a feature uh, see it is like uh, uh, me if I'm conducting a training me charging you chapter wise so I'll complete the chapter I'll ask you to do the test and and that's it and whether you whether only when you implement it at the workplace or you get the value or when only when your credential goes up because of all these things you should pass the exam and then you should be in a position to implement it at your workplace then only the value happens for you so here we are talking about sharing yeah that value I should commit as a supplier I should commit to that value not to no, not just to just the completion of that particular uh, chapter by you so if I'm committing to a feature I'm talking about an engineering code or a piece of code which is delivered to you as per the acceptance test and I don't I'm not at all bothered about your returns from that feature uh, whereas uh, when it's a value based uh, partnership then we are talking about uh, the return on investment to the to the client so our, our emphasis is on real return on investment to the client uh, so here you may not be able to dump a client immediately after uh, no it cannot be used interchangeably uh, that, uh, because feature driven uh, doesn't talk about commitment till the customer gets value it is just delivering features okay so if you can add the value part to it maybe yes it can be used interchangeably otherwise the meaning is slightly different because if I commit to a feature I deliver it acceptance test will run I collect the money but when I say value we are talking about the acceptance test for the value not for the feature no customers can even even ask you to develop features which they don't even use so it becomes valueless right sometimes customers can ask you some features which they don't use at all uh, so that feature becomes valueless you might have you might have delivered it uh, but then customer is not using it and now he realizes that okay it doesn't see a value uh, it's like okay for my house I'm asking for a swimming pool and the contractor will give it to me but if I don't use it then what happens because I don't I don't need a tax rate so in a, in a value-based prioritization okay uh, the debates will happen even if I ask for a swimming pool there is room for debates along with the supplier because you can question my judgment of having a private swimming pool Ah, then we are talking about a feature if you, if you want to resolve with the customer and remove the not required features even before committing to it then okay then now we are talking about value based value based uh, partnership or value based story now here the true value story uh, see customer cannot mention the features customer can mention only the business problem customer cannot tell you things like uh, see these are the features I need feature one feature two, feature three customer can only tell you 
these are the these are the capabilities I need. They reduce the cycle time by this much. And how part is decided by the vendor, or uh, or it is it is mutually done. Okay, so fine. So whether it is even even if it is a Scrum or sprints or see uh, we are talking about a layer about these things it could be FDD it should be XP it should be scrum everything is fine but then we are talking about uh, a layer above it where the commitments happens at the business value level not at the feature level so so I think as a vendor we will have to elevate to that level uh, then, and we are talking about true partnership with the client uh, so sometimes I'm talking about uh, now okay now support I'll support you for your project management certification till you pass okay it's okay so that's fine so generally people say uh, it is it is just for, for you know this will be valid for two months three months kind of thing no I, I can be with you till you pass maybe we are talking about that kind of uh, that kind of an engagement okay then the next question is uh, Uh, so lean all those things are fine so that is that is from the development side so lean software development is for the development side customer may not be really interested there how you develop the product uh, may not it's not it's not the customer's prerogative here uh, but if you are using lean then okay you'll be able to develop it faster at a lower cost which translates into a more value because what is value value is nothing but uh, the returns divided by the investment so by removing unwanted procedures uh, then the denominator will shrink that means okay, you get better value uh, so returns will be the same and uh, the investment you can reduce by removing unwanted features then you get uh, better value uh, so that's fine so uh, uh, here yeah okay so great so that's fine any other questions? Okay, so after after having this commitment with the client and then value stories and all those things in place, okay, as we discussed earlier, it doesn't matter which model you are you're really following because we are talking about Agile. So, uh, under Agile, we have Scrum, Extreme Programming, uh, Lean, uh, all those things, RUP, all those things. So, what you what what you really do to really develop that software? So that is outside the purview of our our discussion. Uh, so here we are talking about contract types for the Agile family. So we cannot we cannot go after any one particular model under the Agile family. So this should be the contracting type. Fixed price will not work cost reimbursable will not may work time and material may work then the best is okay now uh, a value based contract so so that is a that is a message okay uh, any any other questions So uh, with this, uh, we are completing uh, this today's session because we said okay, we'll do it in 30 minutes and we are exactly on 28 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, time and material, the problem is absolutely there is no commitment from the supplier side to the customer, right? Uh, the question is like how time, time and material will, will not work uh, uh, because uh, the supplier doesn't give any commitment to the milestones. The supplier just gives manpower and timesheets. Uh, fixed capacity, there is commitment to deliverables. Yes, it is, it is only commitment to deliverables. But uh, is it the right deliverables? No, nobody knows. Yeah, for fi uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. For fixed capacity also there is, yes, that's right. For fixed capacity also there is no commitment for deliverables. You see, definitely there is commitment for uh, the quality of deliverables. That's fine. But is it the right deliverable? Nobody knows. 
So I may deliver something and if it is not adding value to the customer, uh, the vendor is not accountable for it. That, that is a problem with fixed capacity. Okay, when, I, when we say value-based engagement, we are talking about the value because we, there should be systems to measure that value. So if I, if I go to uh, maybe an automobile vendor here and then say, boss, I'll come out with a customer complaint handling system which will, uh, which will improve your customer retain, uh, retainership by 10 percentage, then okay, you can always write a business case. Then how it is achieved? Uh, that is not specified by the client. So we are writing the acceptance test for this at this level. Uh, it has to be in an agile model. There is nothing like it's a joint decision. So in the pre-sale meeting, you should talk to the customer. Uh, the question is who is going to decide on the contract type in agile model. Uh, in any, any healthy negotiation, it is a joint decision, uh, which is which is uh, okay for the client, uh, the supplier, as well as for the customer. So it has to be a joint, uh, joint decision because unlike waterfall, in agile throughout the customer and the supplier is supposed to work very closely. So unless it is a joint commitment, it's better not even uh, you know, to recommend agile. Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, so for every project, if the customer is not game for it, I think that no point in imposing agile to them. No, how means okay, we are not we are not we are not spe spe specking the the solution here. We are talking about we are talking about the kind of an agreement we are going to sign with the client. Uh, so we, it stops at the agreement level and the business uh, business uh, issues they are facing. It stops at that level. We are not not even getting into features and user stories at this level. Yeah. So how 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 ca how this model will? Uh, yeah. So if let's say you're going to a you're going to an architect and then you are not going to tell him how many rooms and all those things. Say, okay, I need a house and this is the purpose kind of. Okay, so, uh, uh, so if, if anybody has questions, uh, we will continue. And if it is, if you don't have any additional questions, uh, I think uh, we'll wind up now. And I'll upload the, the recorded version of this uh, at PMRI campus. Uh, so maybe you can recommend uh, to any of your colleagues who could not. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll upload the video. I'll upload the video. Uh, and some more uh, stuff to come uh, because we'll be talking about now uh, weekly at least a couple of uh, webinars on Agile that is, that is going to happen. Yeah, so thank you all. Uh, thanks for your time, uh, and I hope it was useful to you. So thank you.